the money. That's episode 119 of Wayne in with Travis Hartman. I am B-Money, the producer. That over there is the talent. We can Trav. We can Trav. We are almost in the home stretch. We are in the home stretch. A few days out from the big blockbuster fight we talked about last week. And that, once again, is Gervonta Tank Davis taking on Ryan Garcia. I can't believe it is finally around the corner. We've been talking about this fight for a long time, or at least a potential of this fight. And uh, once again, until they actually go through the ropes and the bell goes and sounds, we will see. But it's probably going to happen. We can travel. Holy crap. Let's really pick this thing apart. I know last week we referenced a few things, but let's really talk about this one, this matchup between the two. It's a 12-round, one, uh, actually a catchweight, 136-pound uh, catchweight fight, 12 rounds, T-Mobile Arena lot there in Las Vegas, Nevada, coming this Saturday. That's April 22nd. Weekend, Trav, talk to us. Talk to the crowd here. Talk to the fans and the subscribers. What are you seeing in this fight? Uh, I'm all over the place. Um on my prediction, at least. Well, is. let's wait to the prediction. Let's just get to the fight itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm breaking it down. This is so. This is a very tough matchup. This is a even out of Javante Davis's own mouth. This is a 50-50 fight. Javante, I just watched a, a little thing on him, an interview, and Javante was like, um, "I'm not having my family come to this fight." He goes, "I'm not having my mom come." He's not having my kid come. I'm not having my whatever is a girlfriend or wife. I don't know what it is, but he's like, "I don't want any of them there." He's like, "It's going to be a war," and I'm like. Wow, like I that guy's a very confident guy, and for hear hear him say it like that, I was just like, he he knows this is a very serious fight. He knows this is a very fifty fifty fight. But what blows my mind, Dobie Money, is this is not even for a world title, and we're talking about this like it's gonna be the fight of the century or something. It is gonna be a great fight, but we're losing, we're taking respect away from Devin Haney fighting Lomachenko, which is the real world title fight at one coming in a few weeks. Yep. So. I, I, I want to make sure and say that first because neither one of these guys, King Ryan Garcia or Javante Tank Davis, are world champions. And this is a catchweight at 136. It's not even a full lightweight 135 limit. Right. However, this is a great fight. Yeah. I do not disagree at all. And I think this is a fight boxing needs. This is a fight the fans are going to love because it is going to be – it's hyped up. These guys have been going back and forth for a while. They're both super talented. They both can hit hard. Mm-hmm. They're both super fast. They both have an amateur pedigree. I believe they even faced each other in the amateurs. So, oh, my gosh, B-Money. I don't even, where do you start at? Well, here, here's where I'm going to start weekend, Trav, and this was surprising to me. So I took a look at uh, the BetUS odds here. So that will give us some Vegas odds, put some gambling to it. So on BetUS.com, we're looking at Tank Davis as – an overwhelming favorite, minus 260, where King Ryan Garcia is a plus 210. That's an interesting starting point because I'm not sure if I agree with that weekend, Trav. I'll give you this as well. It looks like seven and a half rounds is kind of where the line in the sand is for this fight as well, the over-under. And those odds are basically split even almost, one t- minus 110, minus Wait, 120. what's the over-under? Uh, seven and a half rounds. So Seven they're saying this rounds. fight's going to end in so a knockout. They, so, so they're saying it's going to end in a knockout in the latter rounds, and it's going to be Gervonta Tank Davis as the preferred knockout artist in those rounds rather than a Ryan Garcia. I think I'm going to go ahead and step up. I'm going to say, though, that I think this fight goes over. I'm, I think you should pick the over. I do. I really do. I think that I don't see how this fight goes seven rounds. Mm. I think it goes over. Could be wrong. Who knows? But this is a classic great matchup of two guys that are just extremely talented in both aspects punching boxing all of that ryan garcia has the reach has the height has the weight tank tank davis has the power has the speed doesn't have the reach because he is smaller however the reason why i brought the reach up is because there's two guys that i base my prediction off of a little bit And that is when Tank fought Leo Santa Cruz, knocked him out cold, but did have problems with him. He's longer, rangier. Mario Barrios, who is – he reminds me of his his body type, is a little bit like Garcia. He might be a little taller. I think Barrios is like an inch taller even. But he's got that long frame, boxes stays on the outside. And Tank beat both of those guys. Mm. Knocked them both out. Mm. Knocked Barrios out in the 11th and knocked out um, Jose Santa Cruz in the 6th with a – Nasty KO, those on the ropes, slipped, left yep. uppercut, brutal, okay? So, with that being said, I do think Tank knows how to fight these guys. Mm-hmm. So, even though he is a massive, um, giving up a massive advantage on reach, 
he does know how to get past that reach. Mm. His, his boxing ability, his smarts, his ring generalship, he knows how to get past that reach. He knows how to get past that power even. Um, but to be fair, and nobody really talked about this, this is both of these guys' toughest fight. Mm. I've heard people talk about Tank's got the best resume or Garcia's got the best resume. Let's throw that all out the window right now because right now, for sure, this is the best fighter Ryan Garcia has ever faced right now. Mm. This is going to be the best fighter that Tank's ever faced right now. Mm -hmm. This is both their toughest fights. This is what makes it tough on us, but this is why I love this as well is because you don't know who's going to win because these guys are both going into this fight fighting the best guy they've ever fought. And that's why it's a little surprising to see these odds makers where they're at with it. Uh, what do they know that we don't know? Because that is a pretty, I want to call it a wide chasm on the numbers, but I, I would have thought it would have been a little tighter, a little closer on that. Um, we can try. You mentioned a lot of items there. And, and in my prediction later, I was going to reference some of the things you mentioned. And I think a lot of those tangibles for both guys negate each other. So to me, it's this fight's going to come down to some very basic elements okay because i think they both have the gas tank i think they oh, both yeah. have the quickness yep. i think they both have the explosion yep. okay so yeah i think reach is going to be a situation or an issue i think size difference is going to be a situation as well and it's going to come down to heart who has the heart in this fight so this is going to be a very very dynamic matchup okay and if you are purchasing this pay-per-view you're not going to regret it, I don't think. Plus, the undercard looks pretty good as well. And we'll yeah. get to that also yeah. in a moment. So, uh, Tank Davis, as you mentioned, I think this is going to be his hardest matchup to date. Yep. Uh, and then Ryan Garcia, the same thing. I think that goes without question, too. I don't think there's no debate on that. Nobody that these guys have faced has been as good as the other person they're facing right now. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's not debatable. Now, the question for now, King Ryan Garcia, is how does he handle an opponent that's smaller and just as quick as he is? Because his typical competition is roughly about the same size, whereas a t whereas a Tank Davis has fought guys that are bigger than him, longer than him. So he is, like you said, used to that kind of an opponent. So I think that's going to be an interesting myth mismatch but the other way around yeah. where ryan garcia is not ready for somebody that is smaller and just as fast and explosive yeah and you got to realize too that also garcia is our garcia tank is also left-handed mm. Gar ryan garcia is right-handed so this is a this is a classic like lefty versus righty matchup that can cause problems either way uh but obviously i think Tank has fought more right-handers because the majority mm -hmm. of people are right-handed that, that are boxing is who he's faced. And Garcia, he fought a lefty. And you remember that lefty that he fought? Luke Campbell? Yep. And you remember what Luke Campbell did to him? Yep. With that left hand over Put the him top? Put down. Although, the, everybody says that, that Luke Campbell's not a big puncher, but Luke Campbell can punch. Okay, he's not, no, he's not a devastating puncher, but the guy can punch a little bit, okay? And he put Garcia down. But Garcia got back up for mm -hmm. sure. But to think that uh, Davis does punch harder than Luke Campbell. He does. However, Ryan Garcia knows this going in. Ryan Garcia can't go to sleep on this one. Right. He can't. And I think what he did was he slept on um, Luke Campbell early in the rounds. It was one or two, caught him cold, um, and dropped him. But Ryan Garcia got up. So he's got that tangible as well that I think in this fight, B-Money, I think we could see somebody go down in this fight. I don't know that I don't know that there's going to be a knockout. I don't know. It's just these high-level fights, I don't just – it's these two guys, though, are so explosive that you would be surprised if there wasn't a knockout. So, right? yeah, so I referenced – Especially with the over-under at seven. I referenced last week on 118 that uh, Ryan Garcia's biggest weakness is on his right side. He always drops his right hand, which plays into Tank Davis's game plan here. If he has a heavy left – Swinging for this hand, this this side of the chin and this side of the face, which Ryan Garcia exposes quite often, that's yes. not a good mixture and formula because we saw that in Dallas. Luke Campbell did the we same thing. We saw it thing. live when he, we were absolutely inside. We saw that because Ryan Garcia drops his hand a lot, and we try to tell at least you try to tell your fighters and your younger guys on uh, keeping the hands up. There's many reasons hand, why, guys. and there's one of them. Keep that up instead of dropping as you're swinging the other hand. Make sure you're protecting yourself. 100%. He does not protect himself quite the way he needs to. And against a guy like this, ask ask Rolly Romero. How'd that work out for him? Yeah. Okay. He caught he got caught without Tank Davis even looking. He just swung for the fences and caught him right there. So that's it's gonna be a dangerous fight for both guys. Um but I also think that we're Vegas at least is not giving credit to the power that Ryan Garcia actually has. Because usually we just talk about his quickness. We talk about how fast he is. No, he's got power, yeah. He has power. Luke Campbell's camp. 
They told us. The McGuigans yeah. told us. He's the first person to stop Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell fought, went the distance and lost yeah. like a 115, 113 to Lomachenko. And they have this. When Lomachenko's like Lomachenko. They have the same critique going into that fight, thinking he's just a pretty boy. He's just a prima donna. What they, they call him? A social media darling. Social media darling. Yeah. They walked out with respect. They, they told us after the fight. Like, we were drinking like, with all the guys. Yeah, we like, were there with Luke. We were there. off-air stuff, but, they, but they're, they're okay with that. Yes. But like, they told us straight up that what, exactly what you're saying. They're like, hey, man, guys, I'm telling you that we came into this fight thinking that this kid wasn't tough and didn't have that grits and that heart if things got hard. And that was kind of been Garcia's knock is he was a pretty boy. He's a boxer. He's never been in tough. And he's never had adversity. And Luke Campbell gave him adversity. And what Ryan Garcia do? Rose from the canvas. He responded. To stop him with a body shot. And yeah. that body shot was nasty. Yeah. I promise you Luke Campbell is a tough dude. He would have got up if he could. He couldn't. So, I mean, you're, there's so many points that – Go in favor of both these guys. Yeah. That's why this makes it crazy interesting, and I don't know who's going to win, B-Money. Okay, so let me ask you a different question before we go into the actual prediction. Uh, do you think both guys get dropped in this fight? You know what? No. And the only reason I say that is because for some reason, I've never really seen Tank in trouble. I've never really seen Tank... Um, take a big shot because his defense is a little better his quickness is a little better he's a tight package it's hard to get in there and that's yeah. what it is he does he's got more of a tighter defense he's got mm -hmm. more of a comfortable like come get me type of thing and garcia leaves himself open but he's super talented enough and i watched a video about garcia talking about people were like he keeps his hands down too much and garcia's like well come hit me he's right he does keep his hands down but how many people actually do get to him yeah. and as many amateur and pro fights as he's had yes luke campbell dropped him okay it was a long rangy reaching punch even but he did drop him but who else has yeah nobody so ryan garcia right now he has that quickness and those reflexes okay and if you notice anything roy jones jr had that same ability sure. that ryan garcia has where they're just super fast they anticipate stuff and they do stuff that's unhuman like right but that stuff fades over time, like it did with Roy. Roy is just barely off now and gets knocked out. Garcia is not in that place right now. So I don't know that Tank is going to be able to get to him like that. I yeah. don't know that he's going to be able to touch him like Luke Campbell did even because Tank is more compact. He doesn't reach for his punches. Tank's a counter puncher. When Tank knocked out Leo Santa Cruz, he was close on the ropes. Slipped the, the punch corner, and went under, right? Yeah. Close. If Ryan Garcia lets Tank get close, yes, it's not going to be good for Ryan. Mm. It's not because he does make too many mistakes close. Mm -hmm. But if Ryan keeps him on the on the end of his jab, on the end of his punches, that check left hook, that yep. long hook, it's going to make a long night for Tank. But both of these guys have the smarts, the patience um, to, to go long distance here. Meaning if Tank doesn't get to Ryan early in the first four, I think this fight goes like this. Early on, Garcia. Later, Tank. Pretty simple. I think that Garcia has the ability to outbox Tank, and I think Tank has the confidence to be like, you know what, go ahead, keep outboxing me. I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to keep counting you. I'm going to keep doing my thing. I'm going to catch you late. Mm -hmm. But will he wait too long mm -hmm. to do that? And yeah. will Ryan be smart enough to make this into – if Ryan is smart, he doesn't turn this into a dog fight. He turns this into a pretty – but boring fight. Yep. Boxing, staying on the outside. Yep. Garcia's got a pretty good coach in um, uh, Goosen is his name, who's smart, who doesn't necessarily want the fans to have a good time, but right. wants his fighter to win. But will King Garcia's pride kick in? That's the question. Get caught once and we'll see. So we can travel. Let's go to prediction time. I will do mine first, and then we'll, you will give the crowd and the, and the listeners your prediction. Here's my thoughts. Uh, based on the conversation we've had and my thoughts leading into it as well, I think a lot of their tangibles are in common. So I think that kind of negates it. I, I think a lot of those things negate. I mentioned or a few minutes ago that I think length is going to be an issue, not necessarily in Ryan Garcia's favor. Okay, I think it's going to be also tough to get to Tank Davis because of how compact he is. Yeah. They're He's both elusive still too. Yeah. Yes, they're both explosive. They're both fast. Okay, but here's where I think it's going to start to matter, and that's on just overall size prior to the fight. Okay, Ryan Garcia is cutting down to 136. Mm -hmm. Tank Davis probably walks around around. Probably a little over 136, so there's not much of a cut there, right? Yeah. So this is the catch weight. I know there's going to be the rehydration clause and all this blah, blah, blah. But I think overall size, from what I've heard, size matters. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, so I think here's my prediction, and I'm, I'm sticking my neck out here. I say Garcia, round 10 or deeper. I can't give this the straight on. I don't know if he knocks him out or not, or if it's going to be a stoppage of some sort just by a random cut or something like that. But I think this goes deep. 
Okay, so I'm saying round 10 or 11 or 12, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Garcia takes it. I would put money on that plus 210. I don't even. I don't know if I'm ready to make my prediction. But you are because this is what we do. But I'll tell you right now that I'll agree that I don't think Garcia knocks out Tank. If Garcia wins, he wins by a decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see Tank winning a decision on points. I don't because he his, his game is he knocks people out. I mean he's 28 no with 26 knockouts. Mm -hmm. So he can go the distance. Yes. But he usually doesn't go the distance because he's got power and he's got speed and he gets to you. It's one thing if he was an aggressor, but like you said, he's a counterpuncher. Yeah. Okay. He's an aggressive counterpuncher, though. But he's only 5'5. Five five. Ryan Garcia's 5'10. Ryan Garcia has every attribute and every advantage to win this fight. But just to make things interesting for the podcast, <laughs> I'm not kidding when I tell you this that I just now made my decision. Not even exaggerating. Guys, I promise you, because I've been talking back and forth with my. We have my not conferred about this prior. I'm gonna go with Tank. I'm okay. gonna roll with Tank. I'm gonna roll with the favorite. I, I think that this is how it should go down. In my professional okay. opinion, is that Ryan Garcia wins the first four rounds, maybe five, pretty handily, um, boxing, moving, and then I think eventually, like Mayweather usually does, Tank's gonna figure him out and eventually figure out how to get close to him. Because as soon as Tank gets close to Ryan Garcia and closes that gap, it is over. And Garcia's goal is to keep him out. Don't let him get close because if he does get close, he is going to stop Ryan Garcia. If Ryan Garcia lets him get on the inside, he is going to stop him. So I think I'm going to – you know what? I'm going on a big-time limb because I usually don't say these fights end in knockout, these elite-level type of fights, right? I do. I think this one does. Ooh, I'm going to okay. go – I'm gonna go. I'm gonna roll with eleventh um, round knockout in favor of Tank Davis, Javante Davis, and I hope I don't eat my words on this one. Be money, but I'm gonna go with it. And okay. the reason why is I'm with you here is that I did originally was just like Ryan Garcia can win. I'm like pulling for this guy. He's the underdog. I'm like he's got he's got every advantage possible, right? But then I'm like. Man, Tank has been in there. Tank is he's he's only twenty eight years old. And why I say that is because Garcia's twenty four. I think that Garcia is in a position where he can lose and bounce back. I think if Tank loses, will he bounce back? Probably yes, he could for sure. He's good enough. But he is twenty eight. It's not old. We got guys fighting in their thirties now, late thirties, even forties. Mm -hmm. But I do think that this is a setup for Ryan Garcia to impress with his toughness. He'll put on a phenomenal phenomenal performance mm -hmm. but i think tank beats him okay well there you have it here from wayno and travis hartman we have weekend trav travis hartman saying tank davis 11th round knockout knockout of ryan garcia whereas b money i am saying ryan garcia will take uh the decision victory if not just it's 10 rounds or later for me sorry i couldn't pick a specific but i think ryan garcia That's takes fine. this fight um so if you're a gambler, do what you must. And this, uh, that's our take on this fight, our final take. That's our final prediction of these two. This episode drops on Wednesday, so if you're hearing my voice, it probably is Wednesday. If you have yet to subscribe, please do so below. If you're following on YouTube or Rumble, or if you're just listening to us uh, on whatever audio app for podcasts you get, find us, subscribe, and follow our content. We appreciate that. So that is our final take on Gervonta Tank Davis taking on King Ryan Garcia this Saturday at T-Mobile Arena there in Las Vegas, Nevada. That is April 22nd. 12 rounds. Catch weight, 136. Interesting stuff. It is, man. Interesting it's, stuff. It's, you know what's pretty cool is, B-Money, is we have a small connection to the undercard of mm. this fight. There's a guy that is fighting us under and just got named. David Morrell mm -hmm. is now fighting Yamaguchi Falco. Yeah. And the reason why I bring this up is... We were live at Yamaguchi Falco's last fight. Yeah. We fought the Carib Royale December 11th of 2022, and we were there live for that fight. He TKO'd the guy in the seventh. I believe we've seen him a couple times, actually. Uh, but, yeah, we did. We've seen him twice because he fought there in April of 26th of 2022. So we've seen him fight twice, and he has a connection because he fought for Box Lab and Warriors Boxing. David Morrell Jr. is also Warriors Boxing. David Morrell Jr. is 8-0, and uh, super middleweight. But this kid, I'm telling you, I watched. He's eight and zero with seven knockouts. From he, he resides in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but he's also Cuban descent. This guy can fight. Okay, 
I'm telling you, look out for this guy. He just beat a guy, a 12 round decision against a guy who was 16 and 0. His previous fight was 15 and 1, 28 and 2, 12 and 0. This guy has been going through people, okay? And he's stopping these people who are very like to do people, and yeah. he's stopping them, and he's 8 and 0. That's it. And now he's jumping in with Yamaguchi Valco, who is 24 and 1. So look out for David Morrell Jr. in the 168 pound division. Why it's a big deal is because you're in the likes of. Canelo Alvarez, mm -hmm. Bival, mm -hmm. all of those guys, because they're between 160 and 175. So that's why David Morrell is in like a cool little precarious place because if he can keep doing stuff like this, he could possibly bought off one of those fights yeah. uh, and fight one of those guys. So who knows? Change, and change his whole trajectory and change his whole change, life. Also change the promoters, Warriors Boxing and Box Up Promotions, yeah, their, which, their whole trajectory. Which, congratulations to them, I think. They just merged yeah. as well. Exactly. Congratulations, guys. I know Amari and uh, Box Lab and Eric and those guys yep. joined with Warriors Boxing, which is Warriors Boxing is a staple um, of Florida and of the United States yep. and the world. They guys have been around for a while, and they know what they're doing. Um, and I, I've, I've fought on some of the Warriors boxing cards, so I know those guys are a professional organization. They've been a part of world champions. They've been a part of world championship fights for literally decades. So it's a great merge. Yeah, yeah. We look forward to the uh, future events that they put together. I think there's one coming up in a few weeks. Uh, we can travel also on that card. I don't want to, like, beat this thing to death, but I'm telling you, if you pay for this thing, you're going to be entertained. April 22nd, There's yes. even Gabe Rosado's even on this card. I didn't even know Gabe Rosado was on this card. I mean, there's a lot Former going on here. star who got messed up in his last fight because there he got go. backed out. There you go. So this is going to be a very, very fun, exciting pay-per-view event. You have nothing to do Saturday night. Well, now you do. You should do that. Watch you should actually night, scrap everything else that you're planning on doing. We can travel. Agreed. And get this pay-per-view. Go to your local sports bar or pub if they're having it. And make sure you watch it. Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent, man. That's you're you're spot on because it's true. We're not like here's the deal. We when we talk about stuff on here, we just give it straight. We put it in our opinion. This is our truth, obviously. I'm not saying that our truth is always everybody else's truth, but we just we but keep it, it we keep it real and we keep it straight. This is gonna be a great fight. <laughs> straight is a question mark. We're gonna <laughs> this is gonna be a good fight card. April twenty second, I promise people I'll make you this promise that if you buy this card you'll be entertained with high quality boxing this pay-per-view card is 100 percent worth it so i do i highly recommend people go out and check this fight out april 22nd pay-per-view ryan garcia versus tank davis the undercard i can't is believe just as exciting. i can't believe you're going to go against ac slater mario lopez and his boy king he, ryan is, garcia is he picking king well i'm sure he's going to because that's his that's one of his, his boys heritage. so anyways to, so uh, okay they're both california boys so we can travel we're going to turn the page new chapter okay so we uh, we look forward to talking about it next episode next weekend or next week 120 we're going to obviously catch up on what happened there in that fight but let's turn the page because there was another fight that kind of went under the radar uh this past weekend i wouldn't call this we, we were looking for a, a money shot of the week highlight yeah, I'll, I'll, so i'll do the sound effect Bling. but this wasn't really it okay no there was not one shot you're right but we will draw attention to it because it is heavyweight action, and that's Joe Joyce was in action there in England, and he was taking on Zhang. Some guy, a heavyweight from China. That Which I've seen him fight before, the Zhang guy. Lefty, yeah. Zing, Zhang? Zhang, Zhang. Um, upset. Juggernaut. Upset alert. Maybe I get an alarm. Upset alert. Um, He's called the juggernaut, though, but the only juggernaut we know is not him. We know the juggernaut from the, the BKFC juggernaut oh yeah lorenzo yeah yeah that's the real that's juggernaut. the real juggernaut right there right we're sorry not joe joyce but. and in in all honesty when you watch this fight if you did watch this heavyweight fight which is kind of like midday on saturday yeah because in england that was not a juggernaut fight no he got popped a few times definite swelling definite orbital bone break probably and it was a doctor stoppage Big upset because I think Zhang was like a minus eleven hundred or my or plus eleven hundred. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious! So Joe Joyce was fifteen and zero, and Joe Joyce was also in um, Tyson Fury's training camp. Has been with him for a little while, so he, they had high expectations. The guy was, I believe, he was a gold medalist as well. Joe Joyce was um, fifteen and zero gold medalist. He was beating a bunch of people that I really didn't. I, you know what? He just beat I think uh, Joseph Parker even. He, he beat somebody that I didn't think he would beat, and I could I, I shouldn't have said that because I'm not positive on But Joe Joyce beat some guys that I didn't think he would beat, and I was just like, every time I watched him, I was like, Joe Joyce looks slow and plodding to me, right? He's a big guy, he's like 256, something like that. Um, but he got upset by a lefty Chinese heavyweight. Uh -huh. Think about that. How many Chinese do you know that are big 
And this guy's big. I, I don't know what his height is, but I know he's that he weighs 276. Yeah. He's got to be 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six for sure. But then he's a big dude, and he's a lefty. So I don't know what happened to Joe Joyce, but Joe Joyce claimed that he had issues with the lefty. He's like, I, I just couldn't see the punches coming. Listen, I've fought lefties before, so I do. I understand that. It does. Lefties, their punches come from a different angle. They're from a different stance, so it is a little different. However, you're at this level. How many lefties was Joe Joy sparring with leading up to this fight Seriously. is my question. How many? Well, and, I hope he was and, every single sparring partner I could, I could, I could answer the, I could answer him as to why he couldn't see the punches coming. Because his left eye was swollen shut. Okay. He got rocked in the first round. Yes. So the doc, I can't remember which round, but the doctor came in. Six uh, or seven, yeah. And checked it right after the round started, let the fight go, and then probably a minute or so into that into that round, yeah. came back in, whispered to the ref it was over. Uh, okay. We've given enough air time to this thing. But, yes. Yeah, so uh, we talked pre-production about this weekend, Trav. When we look at the heavyweight division, there is a big difference. There's a yeah. big, wide chasm between the elites and... Yep. And then just the rest. Yep. And these two here, they're in the rest category. They're not so. the elites heavyweight. I would almost say that uh, Anthony Joshua borderlines as well, in my opinion, between elite, quote-unquote, and the regulars. I think he's a regular, in my opinion. I would love to see him against Joe Joyce. I, I would like to sure. see a fight. I think sure. that would be a fight that I think is pretty competitive. I think it's pretty even. It'd be slow and plotting. Great. Yeah, That's what we want to see in the heavyweights. Great. But there's a big difference between the elite heavyweights and just the the average and run of the mill heavyweights and that's what you saw here yeah. congratulations to you know Zhang for basically changing his life yeah. i mean for 39 for years old taking that w and then you know and then some great good for him happy to see that um but we can drive that's all we got there what else you got for us i mean that's about it we that he did change his life because now he will get a big fight which means one of these top heavyweights will try to pick him off for sure. Sure. Because he's coming off of a big win, but he's very beatable. He is. He's a slow, plodding lefty. He is, to be fair, he is a very awkward fighter. So I know that's why it gave Joe Joyce a lot of problems because um, Zhang is a very awkward lefty. He does he those punches kind of weird. It just He's a different fighter. Like you, first, first of all, he's a 276-pound Chinese guy, which you never hear of. The Chinese are usually a lot smaller, and that's... Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest and yeah. real. They're just a lot smaller. You don't see too many heavyweights that are that big. Right. Plus, his fighting style is just, it's different. I can see how it gives a lot of guys problems. But just like in anything, if you're an undefeated guy who won a medal in the Olympics, you're supposed to beat these guys. No matter if it's ugly, whatever, you get the W and you move on. And Joe Joyce proved to us that he couldn't do that. Yeah. Whether that's indicative of the rest of his career i don't know some people have off nights who knows what was going on but i do know from the first round on joe joyce was never really in that fight yeah which is a problem yeah can't blame it just on the injury so we can try we switch gears again and, and we close up episode 119 of wayne and with travis hartman first of all by thanking our media partners that's th boxing goldstream financial and if enterprises we are the number one beards bourbon and boxing podcast shot in orlando florida specifically laureate park specifically specifically in a boxing gym on the second floor of said boxing gym and the th boxing podcast room shot on a sunday or monday today being sunday dropping on Wednesday morning at 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In, in the, the world. world. That is us in our demographic. If you have followed along or subscribed to our content, we do appreciate you and thank you so much. Continue to do so. And if you have yet to do so, consider it. Hit the thumb up. Uh, give us a like. Give us a comment. Give us a subscribe. That helps uh, the uh, the, met the matrix and the metrics. Ooh, I like you that. You like that? Uh, and the algorithm. So we can travel. Let's go ahead and I'll throw it to you. Final thoughts. I'm going to put a bow in this. Oh. Ooh. Pull it back. Pull it back. What's up? What do you Verbal got? diarrhea. Let me give pull it. that back. Give it to me. We got a, we're drinking this rabbit hole derringer okay so the bourbon lounge episode dropped prior mm -hmm. so we have our breakdown and take on this if you haven't checked it out go check it out though please do uh, sipping on this whole time you know follow our content you can see that they're in the catalog this is very good stuff we're going to continue to drink this probably off air too yes okay so I not disagree that's the only thing kudos to you rabbit hole very very solid stuff it's very solid stuff we're now really like it. i will give you Final thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's all I got. Children of all ages. <laughs> Welcome to the number one boxing beards and bourbon podcast, Shot in Orlando, Florida. Da 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 da. da.
in the world. I thought you were going to do it. Okay. We love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for all the subscribers. Yep. Our subscription keeps going up. Our views keep going up. We're obviously doing something pretty solid. And you know what? I enjoy the heck out of it. Seriously, thank you guys. Um, we take time out of our day to do all of this. But also thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to us. That yes. actually, it's very humbling. And we do appreciate every single view, every single comment we get. We keep it real. We try to give you boxing news. Unedited. Yep. Straight from straight from the horse's mouth. With no propaganda, no, no BS, no, straight, straight Some to BS. you guys. I'm sorry, BS. Some yeah, BS. Whatever. We see you, okay. We see, we we see each and every one of you, and we thank you. Uh, that was your final thought. That was my final thought. Oh wow. Um, hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. What do you got? Something? I, I listen. I said something pretty deep last week. I don't have anything about deep. the Pope. So I feel like it's your turn to give us. Send us off. You be can't money. on the spot. Send us off. Be money with maybe hmm. you send us off with a little tune, but well, no. Here, here's something I will say. Uh, f when you when you're talking to your friends and family, when you're talking to maybe you're in business, clients, whatever else, maybe you're talking to those that you train, and maybe you're a boxing aficionado. You know, hi. Uh, <laughs> is that for the socials? <laughs> yes, that's for the socials. Um, oh, that's terrible. No one wants to hear that. Go for it. That's a that's a right, terrible. Right, right, that's, that a terrible that's a terrible. That's a terrible. Don't interrupt it. This okay. is supposed to be not Spotify listeners. If you're watching, you should subscribe to us on YouTube, please, because you would see the shenanigans that just Here's happened. here's about it to here's happened. about to be the kernel of wisdom. So you better get the the camera rolling. Hold on, hold on. Okay. People don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Ooh. Ooh, people that's deep. People don't. What did I say? <laughs> Wait, you, it sounded good the first time. Let's see. How yeah. much you know? How much you know? Until they know how Bingo. much. Bingo. People don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. You know what? That's that's brilliant. Actually, I really do like that because it's true. And you know what? We care about boxing immensely. This is our pa This is my passion for sure. And I, I believe that you like helping people. You like talking I about do this it. stuff. And me and B Money have a passion for this. Uh, I like drinking. We have to. I like we, we have a passion I like for boxing. beards, bourbon, mm -hmm. and boxing, mm -hmm. which is the perfect. We're the three Bs, and it works. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Okay. And that's it. And that there, over there, is the talent. Weak in Trev. He uses the word talent loosely, but that is also B Money, a.k.a. producer. That's I love all. It. God bless.